we're yeah. back. Hey guys. Hey. So uh my poster's kind of messed up back there, but Oh we'll man. Be... Oh yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, I don't even remember buying it. That's how long ago I got it. <laughs> but uh we'll be talking about the psychic uh yeah. here in a sec, but we'll start with uh recent watch watches. From uh, we'll we'll start with Dirk as always. I think. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh, so I've been hearing about this. This is a Fulci too. I'm I'm not, you know I'm not gonna go too crazy, but man, I gotta say. Uh, so I recently watched this one. This was a Troy Howard recommendation. Oh. And uh, it's Beatrice Chinchi. From 1969, and. Like, I know I might be going overboard. I don't think so. Like, this was Fulci's film, uh, favorite film that he ever made before he made Don't Torture a Duckling. Uh, but it's a 10 out of 10. It, it really is, wow. man. It is. Well, it sounds like a drama. It's a drama, right? Or what is it's, it? It's a historical type yeah. film, but it's, man, it's so damn brutal. It's probably like uh, when Fulci was really getting into that type of. He was in a dark place in his life, you know, but man, so it takes place in 1599 and it's a true story too about Beatrice Chinchi. Uh, it's a true story. She, uh, she was put to death, but anyway, there's a, like a, the whole, the whole thing's about, there's this tyrannical, he's like a tyrant, tyrant type wealthy landowner. He abuses his family. He abuses all the people that's, that that tries to cross him. He's just a real piece of shit. And uh, but yeah, it's uh, so he 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 falls to his death from his uh, bedroom balcony, and the uh, suspicions are raised. So all the family is taken in and they're tortured and try you know trying to figure out who who. Who killed him? If anybody killed him, and all this shit, it's a great movie though, man. Like it really is. You got Thomas Million, uh, oh, Adrian God. Larusa, which I heard that Fulci uh, and her didn't really get along, <laughs> but you know <laughs> that's not a surprise. Um, but man, uh, it's got the split diopter shots, like you see from De Palma. But right. De Palma always yeah. gets all the credit for that type of shit, you know. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, it's it's beautifully shot, man. Based on true historical events, and it's very dark. I would say it's also the very first time there's some eye mutilation from Fulci in a film. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I highly recommend that one. Mm. Beatrice Chinch. You'll have to get that one. I'm gonna <clears throat> watch it now. Okay. It's got horror elements, but uh, man, I promise you though, you won't be you won't be disappointed. It has like the setting kind of like uh, "Don't mm. Torture a Duckling," that type. Oh, of right. thing. yeah, but way back, further back, you know. Like, yeah. But uh, anyway, and then so I got another Fulci. <laughs> Since we're on this Fulci theme and shit, so uh, it's Master Time. This is the first time I'd ever seen it. Hmm. <laughs> From uh, 1966. I must and, be. That's Franco Nero and Fulci. Yeah, Franco Nero and, and George Hilton. I think it's his first film that he was oh. in. Wow. But uh, yeah, it's a fun movie, man. It's um, basically Franco Nero's character, uh, Tom. He's called back to town because, like, uh, this. This uh, ty this business tycoon has kind of like bought everything out in the town, and then his brother had some land that their dead mother left him, and the the business tycoon even bought that shit from him, took over the farm and his land and everything. So he goes back to find out what's going on. And he finds his drunk ass brother George Hilton, and uh, he just basically just don't care kind of deal. But man, it turns out to be a great. It's it's an action packed western, and I think this is the first time Fulci actually used like violence in any any film. So, uh, 
Uh, highly recommend this one too. I'd probably give this one probably six out of ten. Though I, I can't say it's ten out of ten. But George Hilton, fun as hell in this movie. He's is it's a good one. Um, and then uh, let's see. So the last one I got is uh, it's another first watch for me. So uh, Witchfinder General. Oh, okay. is that the Blu-ray or? This is the 4K from. Okay, uh, I thought I thought there was a 4K out. Yeah, from uh, 88 Films. Oh yeah. I think it's sold out now. Uh, hmm. But man, holy shit! This is like the granddaddy of all the the witch type torture fucking folk car type. You know? I'm, do you? I don't know if you were watching TV regularly like I was, but they they showed that on TV and like on the weekends and shit. Obviously, cut up, a, cut down a little bit, but it, you know, it's still pretty brutal. Yeah, I watched a ton of TV back then. I never saw that. I mean, yeah. I've seen, seen other Vincent Price, but yeah, but man, uh, this it has the U.S. cut, which is called the Conquered Worm. Yeah, that's what they showed it as. Yeah, the U.K. cut. Uh, I didn't even bother watching that. So, like, because you're not going to get the titillation scenes uh, and stuff, you know. Yeah, that played on UK TV a lot as well. But I didn't see yeah. it, so I can't see what version it was. Right. Well, I imagine it was the UK version, right? Yeah, probably the watered down version, yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, it's basically, it takes place in 1645. There's this, uh, the English Civil War is going on. Uh and there's this self-proclaimed witch hunter, uh, Matthew Hopkins, which is Vincent Price, and he's and he's doing it all for personal gain. So he's like blaming these. He's like coming to these towns and any any beautiful women he sees, he 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 says well, that's a witch, or <laughs> people say that they're witches. Then he he brings all the young ones first, mm. and then he has sex with them. <laughs> Like, I'm like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> but yeah, Vincent Price is a mean son of a bitch in that movie, man. Uh, it's probably one of the meanest roles you'll see from Price. But uh, yeah, I, I I really liked it, man. It's it's uh definitely worth watching, checking out. Uh, I'm glad I got it. So. Yeah. But yeah, man. Um. Yeah, that's it. That's my three. All right. Oh. We'll go to Dirk or Darren, sorry. So I can still be half asleep. Or no, something. I'm Darren and he's Dirk. No. <laughs> the other but, D um, name. Yeah. The, uh, the UK D. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I've been digging into this years of lead set. Um, oh, yeah. And I mean, I've been digging this, you know, really like loads. So the first one I watched in this time was um, No, the case is happily resolved. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Oh man, I mean the like I've seen three on this set now, and they've all been bangers. Um, so you've got this one. It's directed by Vitero Solano, who directed um, Savage Free, which I'll talk about in a minute. And he also did Libido. Um, we have this guy. Uh, he kind of witnesses the murder of this prostitute. <coughs> um, she's being beaten by this guy with a club. You know, he's out fishing. He he happens to see all this. Um, you can clearly see the killer's face. Um, but then he panics and he fails to report the killing. So uh, next day now, he's going past a news agent store and he sees his face and he sees, like, you know, the report of this murdered girl. But what he doesn't realize is the killer has actually turned around and said that it was him and he's given his car details and all that. So this guy now is just like a trembling wreck, like, you know, all his marriage is falling apart. Um, and it starts to ruin his entire life. Um, so this starts um, stars Enrico Marina Salino. Um, you probably know him as the cop from the bird, um, uh, the crystal bird, uh, bird with crystal plumage. The sorry. crystal bird with the plumage. I know it's hard to say first thing in the morning. <laughs> the crystal with bird plumage. Yeah, yeah, that down, one. The bird down the road. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you probably know him like. More as the father in Night Train Murders. Um, yeah. You've got Martin oh, Brochard yeah. from Eyeball, Lindsay's Eyeball. She stars like as his wife. Um, a score by Rizzo Alani who did Cannibal Holocaust, which is amazing. I really like the score to this. Um, 
but yeah, I'd say it's highly recommended. Um, so I know the case is happily resolved. Uh, next up is Savage Free on the same set. And I know, like, I know Dirk, I'm not sure so much about Dana, but I know Dirk and Steve, like, almost human. And this oh, yeah. is just like it. Mm. Um, yeah, so I really dig this one. Um, same director, Bitaro Salerno was the last one. Uh, stars Joe Alessandro. He plays this complete psychopath. So you've got him and his two friends that are in this dead-end job, computer job, um, and kind of the, the only way they can get their frills is by going to football matches and causing violence and all that. But um, they're so pissed off in their jobs, they kind of start upping the violence and they start nicking cars and, you know, and one of them one day just turns into like this complete act of road rage where this lorry driver almost goes into them. They kind of slam the brakes on last minute. They get out, they kill this, you know, uh, kill this guy. Uh, and then it just keeps getting worse and worse. They pick up this prostitute. And when her pimp intervenes, you know, they're, t- they're harassing her and all that. He gets like a knife to his private parts. I mean, oh, it's man. brutal. It is absolutely brutal. The pimp um, does, or the pimp does? Yeah, the pimp does, yeah. Oh, okay. And they hang him up in the square as well. They kill the prostitute. Um, they they kill the pimp and the prostitute? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, honestly, this is crazy. <laughs> Ain't um, no whoring going around here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like the Jalo as well. But yeah. there's another scene that's great where they nick this taxi. They pick up these two women. I think she's the wife of, like, an MP. And they kill her, They kill the one by a forklift, you know, truck. It's just, oh, you've got to see it actually. It's amazing. Um, you saw so you've me. Got, is it? Yeah, honestly, you love it, Dirt. Honestly, <laughs> um, you got Martin Brochat. It's uh, the same. You know, there's a lot of the same because you know the director did the last one. Um, you got Gianfranco De Grassi. He was also in Night Train Murders. He plays one of the punks. Um, Enrico Mario Solano's in this again. He plays a detective this time. Uh, what Dirk my like is as well that like Gastaldi wrote it. He was part of the writing. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you like, you know, Lindsay, obviously, then I think you'll you'll dig that. Um, That's a Lindsay. No, but it's like almost human. Okay. okay. It's yeah, it's like a Lindsay film basically. Okay. Um, last but not least is um, Dark Windows from 2023. It's basically a slasher directed by Alex Heron. Uh, story of this girl. Who she's with a few friends. They end up in a car. I think they've been drinking and um, they have an accident and one of the female girls die in the car. Um, so the one girl now, she goes to the wake of the funeral and all that and all the family of this girl is blaming her. Um, so they all decide to get away. They, you know, her and the, the friends who were in the car, they decide to get away for the weekend, you know, get their mind off things and all that. Um, but she keeps hearing this voice, the voice of the girl who's dead, you know, throughout the house. And um, this figure in black seems to be stalking them as well. Um, she has flashbacks to the incident and um, basically it was all a prank on this dead girl. They, they were playing a prank on her and that's why she died. Um, it takes like 50 minutes to warm up. So it's really slow. I mean, if you can get to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um but there's a great scene. There's death by vodka, which is like Ooh. you just got to see that. Oh damn! So like but a, um, like yeah, a yeah. Force so, uh, drinking or like what's that? Drinking? Oh no! They kind of pour vodka. You know, they got like this. Um, they put this thing over his head, yeah. and they pour vodka down, and ah, so right. he kind of suffocates in his own vodka, basically. Right. Um, but yeah, I got like mixed feelings about it. It's okay. Um, it comes like it gets really good the last twenty minutes, but it's a little too late. Uh, performance is good, same track good. Um, if you want like a home invasion style slasher, then you know you might get a kick out of it, but not great. It's like a five eight to ten. Um, the last two were like eight eight and seven out of ten as well. So okay, but yeah, that's the three I got this week. All right, Dana Lynn. Yeah, I cut them down because Steve was telling me three. He was doing this number. Uh, yeah, that's what I could have gone on because it's been so long. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, since it's, 
April, and we have April Fool's Day at the beginning of the month. I always have to watch my April Fool's Day movies. So one of them, of course, is Slaughter High. Why are I you love shaking that film. your head? See? Yeah. See, Darren loves it. What are you doing? I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> so who doesn't like Slaughter High? Dirk, you like Slaughter High, right? Oh, God, yeah. I can't stand that music thing. Yeah. Well... I don't know if they told it was Ham uh, Manfredini that did the the music. So I don't know if somebody told him to make the music that way. That was his choice. But yeah, Steve hates the music. But that's not a reason to hate the movie, though. One thing I remember about Slaughter High, though, is that in my video store when I was a kid, I was seeing that they had a big ass that, poster. Yeah. In the video store. I mean, it's iconic. I mean, that that alone on the uh, cover art for the VHS would be enough to make you rent it. Right. Well, and it could have turned out to be lousy, but thankfully it didn't. But it it has Caroline Monroe in it as the yeah. oldest living high school student I've ever seen. I love Caroline Monroe. She's, <laughs> she's a beautiful lady and everything, but she was way, way... She'll even admit that she was too old to, to be playing a high school student in it. Um... <laughs> But uh, she must have been real dumb because she got held back. She lot. got held back how many like times? I don't 12 know. years or more. <laughs> but, you know, you have your typical setup where the cool kids play a prank on Nerdy Marty and the prank goes wildly wrong. And uh, so years later, they all get invited to a class reunion. But the only people that are invited are the ones that played the prank on Marty. And you can guess what, what starts to happen. I mean, not a real elaborate plot or anything. Just a basic setup for your typical slasher film. So, I'm not going to go into detail with Slaughter High. But That's good. if you've I will never say, seen it, watch it. <laughs> I will say with that one, though, it kind of confused me early on. Because it's actually yeah. made in the U.K., but it's set in yep. America, and I was always confused with that because there's like one UK actor in there, and I'm like, shit, how did he get over there type of thing? But yeah, right. I, I, I love that. I think the Jester artwork is even better than the cover you've got. Um, I, lo I love that too, and I like yeah. the idea that the killer wears that. Uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. really super creepy. Um, yeah. Super creepy. Yeah. All right, so people are going to laugh, but ah. I, I just got this in not very long ago. The last slumber party. Oh, shit. And I will admit here on camera, once again, it was filmed in Louisiana. Yeah. It was filmed in Dark Snake of the Woods. Just outside of Oil City. Oh, yeah, man. That's only 45 minutes away. I just made that up. I don't know where it was filmed in Louisiana. It probably was Oil City. To be honest. <laughs> it must be a hell. Of... Oil City is like the the uh, Louisiana Hollywood. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> Oil City and Shreveport. You know. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not gonna even pretend to tell you that this is a good movie. I know it's not a good movie. It's a terrible movie. But I find it entertaining. Otherwise, I wouldn't have paid out the money that. Uh, yeah, you would have. That. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome and the AGFA wanted for this sucker. <clears throat> um, the AGFA would have been the only ones that would have put this movie out. Yeah. Uh, Africa. But, huh? Africa. Well, I just do the... All okay. right, Agfa. Whatever. Hey, they got a great movie, though, called Fuck the Devil. And <laughs> oh, nice. Fuck the Devil 2, Return of the Fucker. They should be showing that shit in churches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, Steve. You're going to get us canceled here. Don't be doing that. Uh, but, you know, it's a typical setup with somebody, some guy escaped from the mental hospital, and these girls are having a slumber party, and all hell breaks loose. That's, that's the basic story. But this movie is so weird and bizarre. And when you reach the end of it, you're going to say, what in the hell did I just watch? Um, but that's yeah. what makes it even more fun. And if, if you ask Uncle Bill about it, he'll say Uncle that Phil. this movie makes Terror at Ten Killer look like Citizen Kane. So there you go. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I always liked it. That'd be like... hard. Yeah. That'd be hard for me. I don't know. <laughs> I have to see it to believe it. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's all 
low budget, but it's maybe I don't need to see it. <laughs> Dirk may not. He might his head might explode or something if he tries to watch that. But, I wouldn't uh, recommend it for Dirk. I don't think so. I would for certain people, but not for Dirk. I don't think right. Dig it. So this was a first watch. The last one I want to talk about, and I did get the deluxe edition of Southern Comfort. Oh, How much no. was it? Man? Not seventy five dollars. I hope not. No, no I think I think about fifty at least. I think it was around fifty. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I really like this movie. Uh, it was. Yeah. I, I'll be honest. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. But it really, really worked, and it had everybody in this film. <sighs> Like, some people didn't last very long, but, you know, Whew. it had a lot of, you know, recognizable names, names in it, which I'm forgetting right now. I know Peter Coyote is in it. And Coyote, Peter. Oh, I'm trying to... It's got uh, Powers Booth. Yeah, Powers Booth uh, is in it. I think it might have Keith Carradine in it. Keith it Carradine. Remo? Huh? Remo Williams? The uh, guy that played Remo? Uh, Fred Ward? Yeah. I think he's in uh, Or am I wrong on that? Fred Ward is in this. Yeah, okay. And T uh, T.K. Carter from The Thing, the guy that was on the roller skates at the at the beginning of The Thing. Was he Windows? No, he was like the Doors? cook or whatever. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, somebody's name. No, it wasn't It wasn't Windows, though. I met Windows last year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm forgetting the other guy's real name, but this was directed by Walter yeah. Hill, uh, too, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Uh, but the guy, I can't remember his name, was on The Final Terror, if you've ever seen that. Adrian Zemed? Yeah. It yeah. wasn't Adrian <laughs> Zemed. <laughs> no. Uh, I like Adrian Zemed. I think Adrian Zemed was hot in his younger days. Okay. Uh, but anyway... Um, You've got a setup where these military guys are on a training mission, which means that they don't have real bullets. One guy has real bullets, but he's not supposed to. But they're supposed to have blanks, and they're going out, and uh, they're supposed to be doing this training session, like I said. And they, they're going to meet some whores basically yeah. uh these military guys they gotta have their women so uh the <laughs> one guy's got it set up where they're gonna meet these these whores and they they want to get there faster so they they're coming through the woods and they come to some water and there's these canoes there and they say well we'll just hop in these canoes we don't care whose canoes <laughs> these are and they get about midway to steve and in, into this lake or whatever you want to call it. And these, uh, I guess they're poachers. Brian James is in this too, is one of the poachers. And um, they start making fun of the poachers. They're in the middle of the lake and the, those poachers, poachers are on the... the uh, poachers. Steve. They're just looking at them like, why, you know, who are you guys and why are you in our canoes? Stop, Steve. <laughs> and they start making fun of them. The, the military guys start making fun of them. And it, stop, Steve. We don't need that. And all of a sudden, one of them takes out a gun and just blows half of uh, Peter Coyote's head off. And then, you know... It's on from then on out. They they have to try to escape these guys. They kidnap Brian James and take him hostage. And the other poachers are just relentless about change, chasing them through the woods. And they've got traps set up all over the place. This one guy get I think it's T.K. Carter maybe that gets done that way. This thing, this bed of spikes comes up and goes right into him. And it takes a little bit to get started, but once it gets going, it's a really, really good movie, really uh, tight movie. And that's uh, uh, that's in Louisiana too, right? It's I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's a Deliverance style film as well. Which yeah, plays mm -hmm. well if you put the two. Together. I don't think there's any uh, there's no, no squealing no. like a pig, right? 
Yeah. No, no there's none of that. They, they should have found that Ned Beatty should have played something like he was like a traumatized character. But yeah. there is a great scene. I can't sit down because of his butthole hurt. Oh, right. gosh. There's a great scene, though, that's really creepy where the guys have to bury like three of their own. And they come back around to the same place where they buried them. And the poachers have dug them up and tied their bodies together. It's just, it's it's really gruesome and eerie, that scene is. But I would recommend Southern Comfort. Would you, Steve? I think you've seen it, ain't you? There's other kinds of liquor you could choose from, but uh, I don't know. How about Kentucky Deluxe? <laughs> I guess you could drink some Southern Comfort while you're watching I've Southern I've had Comfort. that. I, I, I don't know. I don't remember the movie that much. I mean, I get the gist of it, but, you know. But. Crack open some j and I think. <laughs> there you go. Bartles and James, some wine uh, coolers. Gorefub likes Final Terror. Yeah. Steve don't like that movie. I no, think. not no, no more. No pigs. No pigs. <laughs> I all actually right. don't know Final Terror. Um, it's all right, but it, you know. It's kind of slow up until, but the whole ending and all that, the way they, you know, get the killer and that is great. Um, but it got lost in, in the shuffle, I think. Well, Didn't I they, thought, re they re release it because Daryl Hannah became famous, I think. And I think that it yeah. either didn't get released and then it did get released because. A little, you know, it was on a shelf for a few years. Well, Daryl really... Hannah's in it. Rachel Ward's in it. Yeah, yeah. so that yeah. people that you know got a little bit more famous, then they released it, like like they did with like Texas Chainsaw Three or something. Texas Chainsaw Four. Yeah, yeah, I mean, four, four, four. Yeah. The next generation. Yeah. Like... The re the return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. So my couple here, uh, I did see. There's a, a set out, isn't it called like Spanish Bloodbath? Or yeah. maybe. Yeah. I saw you might have talked about that. Yeah, it's we just one, did a stream on it. Yesterday. About the. Uh, what was it? The. Uh, something with the fish with the golden fish eyes. With the eyes of gold. Yeah, yeah. So I watched <laughs> that and it was like, what in the hell? <laughs> uh, Y'all mind that stuff, film. <laughs> that is something. Uh, yeah. I don't even know how to freaking describe it. I think it. I may have saw part of that. How do you like that guy's facial expression? Yeah. <laughs> He's all like... Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the long blonde hair, he looks like a surfer dude. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know... I, was that his dad he was living with? Or was no. that somebody... Okay, I was like, what's He's the relationship? He's a wonder dude, man. Yeah, I know. He's like, you know... Peace, just came through town. Yeah, He's loving pussy. Oh, my bad. I mean, that guy is such an idiot as well in that film that he ends up in four different crime scenes. Yeah, in the face of, yeah. Like, it's crazy. Darren hey. was saying that he he uh he wanted to be the next James Bond. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. So his, his back his backstory is like he was actually being um investigated as being a serial killer in Germany in the oh, 60s. And um, he got like notoriety about that, ah. so it kind of went to his head. And then he come out, or like they didn't get him for the killings, but I mean, when he come out, kind of you know released and all that, he released an LP of music, which is <laughs> shit apparently. Um, but he was on record as saying, "I want to be the next James Bond." Like he was hanging crazy. out with Charlie Manson, huh? <laughs> with the bell bottoms on, yeah. Uh, so. I and of course, there's a few I forgot, but um, I recently got in uh, from uh, several. I know it, Mondo Macabre. It's called Special Silencers. It's an Indonesian oh, wow. film, and I thought it was more of a horror film, but uh, it's more of a kind of a kung 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 fu, but with Indonesian people. Uh, but the main thing is the it, this guy gives these people he doesn't like pills. And for some reason, it's a seed that makes, like, these little branches and trees grow out of them and kill them. Oh, shit. I mean, it, it's pretty uh, effective. It's pretty cool. Um, but, you know, I don't know. It wasn't that great. Um, did, you, did you pay more than you should have? No, I got it from Amazon. Okay. So, like, Amazon has been great. Um, 
as far as some of the the uh, Severin 4Ks, mm -hmm. like uh, Bur Burial Ground, they still want they wanted forty bucks or so at the convention, and I got it for twenty six. Oh shit! You get it with the uh, I believe I did. Yeah, okay. I think you. I think you. Did. And then I also got uh, uh, the sect is coming out, and I'm going to get it for about twenty six bucks as well instead of uh forty I something. I was getting it for you. No, I already did it. I mean, I um, pre ordered it. Well, because I'm getting Steve the uh, the Bruce Lee clone yeah, set. Yeah, I'm getting you that. So, um, so we watched Burial Ground again. Haven't seen it in a while because we've yeah. watched it so many times on 4k and uh i mean i thought it looked mostly decent i mean i, I can't really say it's a hundred you know a, a very big improvement over the blu-ray but it yeah. definitely and of course this one has all the extras who are like peter bark uh he got he oh, returns yeah, to yeah, that I, I guess that villa yeah uh, where they filmed it and stuff and it's funny because of how short he is and he's got his hair all kind of spiky, and he's got a little ear. He got an earring. Yeah, but you got yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got a gobbly gook neck. It's all up in here. You got to talk about that dance show that he. Oh, I was going to say. Oh my gosh! But and he talks about. I mean, basically, they have the uh, thing for 2013 where he like a a horror festival or something he was at. He kind of basically says the same thing. I mean, uh, other than he uh, he. Uh, Talked about he wished he had continued acting. And uh, he was in a couple other movies, but I mean, I'm not sure. There were more comedy films in, in his yeah, character. Yeah. But there, but the highlight is he was on some musical show as a dancer. That oh, shit, shit is weird, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I wish. That would have been awesome. And the funny thing is he's... The His well, hair what, is he's got a hair like a Oopa Loompa from uh, Willy Wonka, yeah, yeah. yeah, and like <laughs> the stage is here and all the people are around it, so they're super close. And I swear, I don't know whatever they're doing, the song or whatever. Nobody knows. I, it looks like they're just what the hell's going on, and it's just weird. I don't know. It's just insane. Uh, but uh, do you think the four K is worth it? I mean, for twenty six, I'd yeah, say yeah. yeah. I got yeah, the blue. yeah. I would I'm say for... back because I got the blue, you know. But it's yeah. worth twenty six, but it's probably not worth. I mean, I probably. I mean, yeah. I mean, I wanted to get some of the extra stuff like the yeah. pillowcase and all that jazz, and right. But you know, bucks. I think. Yeah, right. and I'm all like, yeah. I I I can I can live without some extra perks. I mean, what am I going to do? I'm not going to sleep on it. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to slobber and drool face. all over Peter Bark's young face. You'll wake up and scare yourself. You'll be sleeping. Uh, like they should have had face. a reverse on the other side was Mama. Mama's or her face. titties, at least, yeah. or something. Oh, God. Yeah, Did you actually great. see, <laughs> like, with the interview, he kind of, um, apparently, the woman who plays his mother in the film was slagging yeah. him off, calling him a creepy motherfucker and all this. Yeah. And he actually comes through and says all this, and he said, I can't understand why she didn't like me and all this. Like that's so, kind of hard to believe. She was like a sex actress. She was in that Gore and Venice. Yeah. And, well, yeah. I thought yeah. she. He said. <laughs> I, I thought I remembered him. He said this, that she this was, was really on nice. the UK 4K month, so I don't know. Oh, if oh, 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 okay. So okay. you got yeah. Okay. I mean, it was, the extras. It might be on another. It might be yeah. on another extra on the on your. <clears throat> you got to buy them all. Yeah. <laughs> you got to piece it together. <laughs> Collect them all. Yeah. Like Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything of note. Uh, trying to. Did any of you guys see that Nickelodeon? Like, yeah. Documentary? Well, the first episode. I, I watched that. Before. I haven't watched, I watched I've the first seen stuff screen. on that guy. That's the dude from Better Off Dead, the creepy bastard on Better Off Dead. I didn't notice that. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I mean, when it you know the, I won't spoil it too much. Touchy Philly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of the stuff they did with Ariana Grande, like oh, you yeah. can watch today, and it, and you can tell straight away what they're implying, like sexual references. Mm -hmm. um, the shit with the feet. I saw some shit with yeah, the feet. Yeah, yeah. That's some weird. It's shit. crazy. And you've got some like yeah. one of the guys was sending 
like new pictures to one of the girls to uh-huh. like 11 year old girl yeah. um yeah i won't say too much on it because the subject matter and that but um right i got the last one to watch of that yeah like, i mean yeah. i don't know it's just i see they're gonna release high crime with franco nero on 4k that's i think that might be eight in the uk uh, yeah, because this yeah. is from Blue Underground. Mute right. Witness is coming out on 4K from Steve Arrow. Loves that movie. So, oh man, I do as well. Steve I've already me that, I think. yeah, I've already pre-ordered it. Uh, hopefully, it'll go down on the uh, on Amazon before it comes out. But uh, I guess we'll uh, kick on to the main course, which is a crooked poster back there of uh, the yeah. psychic. And and my pick. You talk. It's your uh, murder. Your... Murder to the tone of the seven black notes. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. exactly right. Dark got it right. That's my favorite title of it. But... We got the dueling music boxes again. In stereo. <laughs> well worth fifteen bucks. Well, until it breaks. Yeah. There's no way that's gonna last a year. No. <laughs> do y'all want me to do this the whole time? <laughs> well, what I'm going to do eventually when this case breaks is take it out and I'll be like that feral kid from uh, Matt uh, Road Warrior. Ah! <laughs> oh, God, <I> <laughs> Go, Dane. But anyway, um, first off, I'd like to say that I didn't find it boring, but I did not realize between the last time me and Steve watched it and refreshing myself watching it this time, because I bought this a while back. But I made myself wait until we were going to cover it on the the show. So, um, but it's a really, really slow burn. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and I just thought I ought to bring that up for anybody that's you know maybe possibly expecting it to be just explosive and something happening all the time. A lot of the movie is is like a murder mystery. To oh me. yeah, it's a true Jallo, for sure. Mm-hmm. And but it being a, a slow burn doesn't make it uh, a bad movie because I enjoyed going back once I got into it again. I enjoyed going back and watching it. So it definitely is about a psychic. You start out with Steve. You start out with a young girl, Ooh. I guess, on a field trip with some of her schoolmates, um, and we have. Steve, that's destructive. I didn't. We have a very uh, elaborate scene that is just like Don't Torture a Duckling. Yeah. Where the little girl is seeing a vision of her mother going to the edge of a cliff. And then I guess the mother commits suicide. Yeah. She just She just jumps off there or falls off there. And as you watch, the face is going against oh, yeah. that cliff. It, do, it does not look any better than it did in the in a duckling. It's pretty much the same. No, effect. it's the si- I same. I mean, effects. it's the same style of it. And you and, know that Fulci's wife committed suicide. So yeah, that's like, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like I think that was him dealing with shit too. I don't mm-hmm. know. It yeah. threw off the. the but it's just no, weird how that happens at the end of Don't Torture. And this yeah. happens at the beginning of the psyche. <laughs> so. Yeah. Right. But. And another connection with Don't Torture a Duckling, and Steve had to point this out to me, that the psychiatrist yeah. in this is Mark the Perel. priest. Mark yeah. Yeah. Is the naughty priest. The naughty priest. Yeah. <laughs> he touches boys. He was Don't the... talk about that, Steve. He touches them. Okay. Like, he I, had a sad ending as well. I'm like, no, no, yeah. I don't want to go on a tangent, but right. he became yeah. a drug addict, drug addict and Thanks to Jennifer out. O'Neill. Was, was it her fault, Dirk? Yeah. I mean, oh. there's rumors. Uh, wow. Yeah. I heard he was married to the girl from um, Suspiria, the one in um, Sister Versala. Well, they Dark were together Hogan. when they yeah. were making this. They were together. Right. You yeah. talking about Barbara Magoff or somebody else? Yeah, yeah. He, ma- he went on to marry her. Wow. I'm not sure if like he was with Jennifer O'Neill is rumored as well uh, by the time this film came around. Yeah. This is like six years later, so oh no, but but he must have been with her because that's 78 as well, Sister Versala. So whether he was having an affair, maybe I don't know. I know Fortune hmm. was pissed because they were always arguing when they were together during the making of the film. 
and he always and he didn't play that shit with the drugs you know but, right but, yeah 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 but uh so you have um had the girl grown up we already know she she sees visions and um that's Jennifer O'Neill, right? See, yeah, oh, yeah. God, the, Jennifer O'Neill from the scanner or from Scanners. Yeah, yeah, and she's a very, uh, very attractive woman. She has the dark hair and dark eyes and all yeah. that stuff. But uh, so we see her. She seems to be totally in love with the with her husband, and she's taking him to the airport, and. Uh, they're kissing each other and being all at first i was like i'd forgotten the beginning of it and i was like did they just get married or something because they're acting like a couple that's just gotten married you know they're all touchy feely and kissing each other and stuff like that the but, honeymoon is on yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> and uh so then when she's coming back from the airport <laughs> Steve's got the George Romero starter glasses on. Um, she has a vision of a woman, an older woman who's been killed, and she sees a man with a lamp going away from the woman. So she puts two and two together. The man with the lamp is the one that killed the old woman. And so she comes out of the days and there's a cop there and he's it's like senor are you okay and he's like he just keeps you know asking her if she's okay and okay yeah that's when she's like going through the tunnels yeah exactly. and she's got that nice ass rolls royce oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so things get stranger and stranger as the movie goes on and and i was I got confused somewhere along the way, and I think Steve was irritated with me because they showed the dead woman with blood coming out of her head and stuff like that. And then they kept showing this younger woman, and they kept talking about they found her walled up. They found her skeleton, um, and she was this young woman that kept showing up on a, a mag the cover of a magazine. And so I was like, I got confused, and I guess I didn't realize there were two different women. And I was like, Steve, are they talking about the woman on the uh, magazine? He's like, no, that's the old woman, Dana. You know, so <laughs> stop, Steve. <laughs> so I think maybe Fulci did that to keep you off kilter, maybe, or maybe that was just me. Maybe it was just me feeling like that. Yeah. I think it's just clever writing the way he did it. Yes, yeah, this is yeah. uh, the first film that uh, Sacchetti did with uh, Fulci too. Like, I mean, it was okay. Fulci, yeah. Sacchetti, yeah. and um, uh, what's what the other guy? Spaghetti, Roberto no. Gianventi, Gianventi, Gianventi. <laughs> it's a large drink. Yeah. And and I would have to agree that I'm not going to go with through every detail of it, but it's a Thank lot you. of back and forth of. Uh, you know, you got red herring. She thinks it's, you know, one person, and then she thinks it's somebody else, and then yeah, it, she's getting these fragment visions. Yeah, little fra fragments, yeah. and and it makes and she's mixing and matching the two in her mind the way these visions are coming to her, and so she thinks that the face of the man she's seeing and the man with the limp are yeah. the same person right and also i love this oh god on second watching is that it goes back and where the psychiatrist is talking to her he says you're seeing things that could happen or that are going to happen you're seeing visions of this and that comes to fruition later in the film and i was like that's fantastic you're having that's a premonition to do that you're having a premonition <laughs> You're Steve. having a premonition. Yes, Steve. Okay. <laughs> it. I, I mean, I got after the third one. I go, she's having a premonition. Yes, Steve. But you can tell, like she don't, she don't like this gift that she had. I mean, no. like where in other films with psychics, like they're usually trying to get money, you know, mm -hmm. from their shit, from their gift or whatever. But she's, she's sort of like Johnny's... she's just trying to figure this shit out. 
kind of do. I think yeah. she's sort of like Johnny Smith in the Dead Zone. She yeah. doesn't want this. I think she's like he's like Johnny Depp in Twenty One Jump Street. Steve, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be serious about All this. Right. Okay. I hear you. But and I would agree with what Uncle Bill said in the chat at the beginning from yesterday. <laughs> Did he put that yesterday? Yeah, he put it in oh, yesterday. Okay. He I, put it, I thought he put it today. 18 hours ahead. What do you say? Word, word, you beat. He goes, the ending of the movie is one of the all-time uh, horror movie finale finales. Great yeah. film. Yeah, that's what I'd have to agree with because I, I, this wasn't your standard ending by any stretch of the imagination. I don't really. Well, I mean, also, also, it doesn't. Ant I mean, to me, it yeah. leaves a question of oh, whether yeah. this certain person is alive or not. Yeah, it's, it's but I liked it. I liked yeah. it after I thought about it. And how good that guy is with putting those bricks in. He put those bricks in and yeah, walled it is, up right? quick. <laughs> that he's was a mason, professional. Right? Yeah, he must be a master mason. <laughs> and he's a, what else was he? I can't remember what he was. I don't even know. He's a rich bastard. I know that. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Did, didn't this remind anybody of uh, the cask of Amontillado Edgar Allan Poe story? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. I was thinking more of like the black cat. No, I mean, it is. Yeah, it's yeah. from Poe. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. So this is the first movie before Beyond where he he had some character walled up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. and I mean, well, you can also Gento say had people. Walled well, in the Black Cat too. too, but that was after. Yeah, you but could also, deep red. Deep red. Yeah. Yeah. You're dead. <laughs> but right. but of course we're, you know Fulci is what I'm referring to, not just any movie. Yes, I don't. I think it's a film that you need to watch like two, three, four times as well mm. to take everything yeah. in. Yeah. Because if you go back and analyze it, every, yeah. there's no cheats at all in this film. Everything, you know, is there for a reason. Or, and like Fulci doesn't cheat. And so what do you scenes. think, though? Like her, her ability, right? Do you think mm -hmm. if she would have just left well enough alone, everything would have been fine? Or do you think that, you know, I mean, I think. I think eventually the the killer in this would have would have taken their chance and took her out eventually just because I don't think that the killer trusted her. Yeah. Well, I think it was all she saw this she got disturbed and and then started looking into it. So right. it was just kind of a success, a self-fulfilling <clears throat> prophecy. That she was going to do all these things because in the in the visions, these things were there. So it was going to happen no matter what. But right, she had to find the truth, and in doing that, I mean, it's yeah, kind of reveals the fate at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, but I doubt if anyone worked this out though, watching it first time, what what was going to happen? No, there's no think. way you could do it. No, because it's it's done no so brilliant. I think, man, it's great yeah. writing. I mean, oh, the way, man, written, yeah, the way it's shot, it's, man, it's a lot of money put in this one, and it didn't do yeah. well. It didn't do well. So, I mean, you know. this proves that, I mean, with the right people and maybe the right movie or story, Fulci can make a incredible film that has, you know, all the good stuff in it. And, I mean, obviously, some of his films, I guess, maybe because of lack of money and and the people uh, that he didn't and, have, and the anymore. and the people in the background, but I mean they were still entertaining. I mean like the Beyond and City of the Living Dead. Those movies are like wacky as hell, and, yeah. but this one is very you know a serious film. Right. To me, it's just kind of like in the category of Four of the Apocalypse. It's like really like yeah. a a real director who has talent, and then the other films, it's like a wild man. Making a movie, yeah, with yeah. Uh, yeah. with with felt spiders on little sticks, <laughs> right? Spiders. Yeah, and with, with I mean, real ones too. But you know, yeah, yeah, you got, but you gotta, you know, <laughs> beef up the numbers, eating, getting eaten. Yeah, <laughs> making noises, tongues pulling out. Yeah, nice. and the way you can tell this is Fulci as well, because how many times does he zoom in on like Jennifer O'Neill's eyes in this film? Oh, so yeah. literally double figures if you like. 
But yeah. um, this is more of his more mainstream film, I think. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, but he mentioned <clears throat> that he had uh, personal troubles during the making of this film. And he thinks because of the subject matter. Because he said he talked to Polanski. And Polanski, which is probably a taboo thing to talk about Polanski. But uh, yeah. anyway, Polanski said, you challenge fate. And that's why, like, because a couple years after this film, his career kind of went down a little bit until Zombie, you know. Like, he wasn't yeah, getting... Yeah. Cause it, well, it bombed. wasn't that long. I mean, Zombie yeah. came out, what, 79? So he right. just had, like, yeah. a year or two, year and a half, two years. Yeah, a couple years. years. Uh, but, yeah, but for a director, like, yeah. a long time. A couple years, he wasn't really working. And, right. But, uh, but Polanski said, you, you challenge fate. And something bad happened, and I challenged the devil, and something uh, bad happened. Right, like Sharon yeah, Tate yeah. and shit. So I thought that was pretty. That was a quote from Fulci uh, mentioned it. I was like, "Damn, it's hardcore." That's that's deep. Yeah. <laughs> Fulci talks. The curse. Yeah, man. Probably. Yeah. I love listening to Fulci though, man. Like, I mean, you got to read it, of course. But yeah, uh, I know. And you got to stop and rewind because he talks so damn fast. Oh, like, my God. Your eyes get literally, I don't know if it's your eyes or your mind gets tired of, Or like, you'd have to pause it on the subtitles and sit there. Well, and you need to go in there and somehow turn the audio off and just slow it down so you can read it like a book. <laughs> Where Fulci's going. Well, he, he probably don't even move. It's just maybe his lips <laughs> a little bit. So where would you guys rank this in your Fulci films? Like, I, I take it it's in everyone's top ten. I would say it's definitely in my top ten. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I it's, guess it's, it's, it's not it's in the high there, top. Though. It's not in the high ones. Obviously, the more yeah, it wouldn't be wacky, entertain, more entertaining films are no, going to be because that's what I think of when I think. Well, yeah, of Yeah, you don't think of Fulci as making something like this and like. Uh, four for the apocalypse, and then all of a sudden he's making. But I think the, uh, these types of uh, movies. Touch of death. Yeah, I, yeah. I think these types the of movies Demonia. show that he's. Yeah. <laughs> that he was a great filmmaker. He I think he was. I don't. Filmmaker. I mean, maybe there's oh, yeah. secret agreement, secret ingredients to make him a good filmmaker consistently, and whatever that was. Kind of got lost along the way. Either sickness, I think that gets lost health, with whatever. all filmmakers. Yeah, I mean, everybody doesn't make. Filmmakers. Nobody has made like consistently good movies. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess argument could be set for Tarantino, but you know, I don't know about that. But yeah, and speaking of Tarantino, he wanted to do a remake of the cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he definitely he likes the music or whatever. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, he used uh, in Kill Bill, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this would probably be like eight or nine in my top ten. I I still love it, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'll give it like a strong eight. But there's just too many like you yeah. know, the Beyond and New York Ripper and all that. Mm -hmm. I'd so say much. seven or eight. Maybe. Yeah, that's a bit right, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's up there for me. Um uh, it's not in my. It don't break the top five, so I don't really no, know where. No, it, no, no. But uh, no. but it's it's a it's a great film. It's a very well made film. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just like I don't know. It's just the the way everything tied together. Definitely uh, got a lot of great uh, scenery. That's something I wanted to ask y'all's opinion though. So, like, without spoiling the film, what do you think? Do you think that the person survived or do you think the person died i think the person was still i mean caught, in the process of dying like no i'm you hear the, yeah uh, that person gasping for their breath. i think i i mean also but you also see when they move a piece of furniture in front of it it the light goes away so there was holes in that it wasn't like sealed airtight yeah. obviously the yeah. Not a lot of air getting in there, but they still, people can live a little bit. And I, I think, right after that last scene, they, that you know, I don't know for sure, but I would think that the person survived. But I mean, did she, actually, man, did she actually do the thing with the watch while she's in the, you know, in the hole? Who, who are you talking about, Darren? 
I'm on a very... <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I'll spoil it a bit, but... <laughs> it's uh, almost the 50 year old movie, so... Yeah. yeah We're it's talking okay. about the, the old person that's in there. You know. No, I'm on about the final shot. I know. The, the old yeah. person, you know... Right. Yes. Yeah. You know. So that leads me to believe why in the hell we have this and not a watch? Because that's cooler. <laughs> that's cooler All than right. a watch. I'm telling you. I wouldn't wear the watch well. anyway. Yeah, cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's pretty cheap watches, but yeah. Uh, what's that? Called? That old man or the man fell off that thing and he was in the hospital and had all this shit on. I mean, how the hell did he survive? Right. That? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But that was stubborn, you can just see his eyes. eyes. Hey, it'd be great to have an alarm clock. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That'd well, no telling great. how much they would have charged for an alarm Probably clock. Probably 50 bucks. Some shit. And then you'd have the skull on the uh, alarm clock, and I don't know if I want to yeah. see that in the middle of the night. <laughs> Steve would get scared. Be off. So I guess the best option to get this is from Severin, right? Or that... Right. This is a lot. The Severin 4K. There's been several different Blu-ray yeah. releases. I love this image right here. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's different. Is that different than the one I got? Oh, no, it's the back. It looks like she's got a, <laughs> looks like she's got a face mask pulled down. Yeah, she's just chilling. She's like, I'm the psychic, bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they should put like that, that Long Island medium's hair on her and then release it. Yeah, I like that close-up of the eye there, too. Yeah, I mean it's a great. I, release. I still like what Steve got on the poster. Of that I think. It's yeah, that, that's what I've got on my 4K. Yeah. yeah, it's very close to the uh, Inferno it is. poster yeah. look. Yeah, yeah. and this yeah. is before Inferno. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and Fulci during this time though hated Argento. But. Here, I got a question. Who's this Captain Crunch person? He's a guy. He's a he's on the cereal box. Yeah, you know Captain Crunch. <laughs> yeah. He says these movies are disgusting. We're not talking about anything disgusting. He right? said, "I'd rather Ducktales." I oh, I don't want a Ducktail. <laughs> don't torture a Ducktail. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Leave them Ducktails so alone, damn it. They they <laughs> find a uh, what's this? Uh, Scrooge McDuck drowned in a thing, drowned in the water. Oh, gosh. And Barbara yeah. Boucher would have clothes on because, you know, can't, can't have her naked. Oh, you could have Holocaust. Don't torture a uh, turtle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this, since you brought that up, I, I was thinking about bringing it up. I found on Cinemageddon, Cannibal Holocaust was shown on television back in the 80s. Why would you even try to do that? Uh, late wow. night. On yeah. this like independent channel or independent TV station, yeah. And I just thought it was funny because I just looked at the pictures. It looks like you know, obviously, it don't look good, yeah. Because it's coming from shitty VHS from years ago. But there's like you see the, you see some of the scenes for Cannibal Holocaust, and you see an ad for a like some bullshit product <laughs> of late night <laughs> infomercial or whatever. Was it, it's it's was it funny. Like, was it? Completely uncut, too? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. I was so, on there, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the worst, when I was uh, in the 80s, I can't remember, I think it was probably the uh, mid-80s. Uh, I think I've said this before, one station here in Louisville, it was like on a Saturday night after Saturday Night Live, all of a sudden they showed, uh, shit, they showed Deep Red, and to me, it seemed uncut because there was a lot of violence I in think it. I saw Deep Red on And TV then they also TV. showed that uh, The Crazies from George Romero. Yeah. Uh, it was called like Codename Trixie or something. And there was like boobs. And at the and then there's that one scene, I guess uh, there's a black guy who's nude and he gets hauled up by a helicopter or something. I don't remember, but it was like, I, I these are some wild ass shit. On regular television back then, but yeah, well, I saw a deadly friend, uh, the Ann Ramsey uh, head explosion oh, yeah. scene with the basketball. I saw that on real late night television, it was after midnight. You're talking about a uh, deadly friend, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember See, you had shit. all the good shit over there, all yeah. the <laughs> they showed everything over here, they didn't show nothing, you know. And no, when we did no. get it, it was all what cut. was her name, Margaret White? Is that her name? 
White House. Yeah. White, White Mary, House. Mary White House. Mary White yeah. House. Damn, I was yeah. way off. <laughs> she was a fucking Margaret crazy White. old woman. Do you ever, Darren, do you ever watch uh, Carolyn Monroe on the Talking Pictures channel? Yeah, yeah, I've seen a few. She's like, uh, hosts it. Yeah. Um, but it's like such an obscure channel to get. Because ah. I can only get it in my bedroom. I can't get it in the li living room huh. for some reason. That's and weird. Because of the aerial thing type thing. But, oh. Uh, no, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's what, it's what you would expect, like, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. I always uh, see that on Facebook. Somebody posts that a lot. I think I do. <laughs> oh, well, that's probably, maybe. But I there's that other the channel, NX. Is it NXY or something like that? NYX. NYX. I, can't, I got that. I got that for, like, less than a day, and then they took it off, whatever, at that distro TV or whatever. Oh, and, no. And I, I even tried to... Uh, Use my VPN to say I was in UK yeah. and to install it, and, and it still wouldn't work. So. Oh man, that's it's oh, good shit. stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean I've got most of it, but you know it's pretty cool. It's nice to like watch them on the telly though, isn't it? You yeah. know, and that type of thing rather than yeah. just dig out your DVD or Blu-ray. But yeah, I see the mayor said he's got the Kino, and uh, when I when I bought when I bought this one, I sold the Kino, so you no. Know. Uh, would y'all say that it's a big upgrade from the Kino? Did y'all have the Kino Blu-ray? No, nah, we did. And okay. I only had the DVD before. I probably time. downloaded it, to be honest. I mean, that's <laughs> I, how I, I usually I, do I everything. I like how this looks or, on the 4K, though. I think it looked decent for the movie of its age. I mean, uh, some things have this richness that it brings out in 4K, and then some movies just don't have that. I will recommend to get this, though, because... There is tons and tons of features. I'm talking about. Yeah. Holy shit, man! There's features on top of features. It's you spend half the day watching, or six hours watching that all that shit. You know. Well, I did see it's, something on the new one. It had like a 55 minute interview with somebody. It's got Sacchetti interview. Yeah. Uh, it's maybe. got interviews from other cast members. I mean, it's it's got a ton of shit. It's got a Fulci. It's got Fulci talking on there. Oh. Like, uh, all kind of shit. Uh, it's loaded, so it's worth it for that. I think. Yeah. The Kino animal don't have hardly shit, man. Yeah. I mean, you got the you got the movie, but if yeah. you're really into features, mm. I suggest that, get the separate. That's well. something I've noticed about the Kino releases that bothers me. They'll make them look really good, but they're always a little light on the edge. Well, they're also usually a lot cheaper, so oh, yeah. it's kind of give or take whatever you want. Yeah. If you just want to watch the movie, yep. go Kino. <laughs> Which I got a ton of Kino. I mean, oh, yeah. But they really don't do shit on the features. Mm -hmm. I noticed that with 88 films, too. They don't do a whole lot either. Like They do a few, but yeah, they're not great 88 yeah. films. No. But. All right. So I guess everybody, we're all recommending it. If you haven't seen it, uh, highly recommend a it. few options out there to watch it. Always check Tubi because, or actually go check IMDb. And then it'll show where it's streaming at if it's streaming somewhere. Yeah, Steve showed me that. And, and there's other, uh, there's another app, but that's the more convenient one for me. Uh, I, I go, like, I'll see something, I want to see it, I go there. Oh, it's on Tubi, so I'll just watch it for free. Um, so for my pick, if it, I think um, I'll just stick with Fulci. And we'll, okay. I don't know if we covered this one before. We're not getting off Fulci train yet. I'm no. glad because uh, I'm gonna pick a Fulci too. After we're you. gonna go to New York and we'll go get some Ripper. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I get yeah, that one again. Whack whack. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll bring out my uh, comic books. Cool. Oh, I don't even. I, I know. Wait a second. I don't have. I think I have. There was one where the maniac was versing. Right. Uh, New York Ripper, and I don't, I don't even know if I, I don't, I may have one issue of that. I don't even know. You, you better hold on to that. Oh I'm, yeah, I'm sure that's high as hell to get. Well, uh, so, yeah, Vinegar I think Syndrome or Severin were releasing uh, the zombie. Yeah, uh, I got comic books. I got the zombie uh, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, those right. are gonna go out of print. Um, did anyone get the City of Living Dead Arrow? Yeah. The new four. Yep. I did. I just I got it in. I'm in between with it. I don't know what to what to do with that. Oh, the yeah. one with the stickers and the... No, it's the new release. The new Arrow. 
Yeah, Arrow came out with 4K oh. of it. And I I we I just got it for what was it from Cauldron Films or something? I mean, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I did. I'm not gonna upgrade that. I did because I got the House by the Cemetery Arrow 4K too, but. Uh, but I, I mean, Wes said it was better, which I don't know if I believe him. I think he said the, the, the. I think he said the Cauldron had probably the same scan. Right. But I imagine. Arrow might have more features. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's they're definitely uh, good on features. So, but the cauldron's I, great though. It is. Yeah. Yeah. They make me buy. Well, they have another company called Neon, Neon Eagle, and they make make me buy some awful movies for some reason. They make you buy. Well, not you know. <laughs> there's hold, a thing called Jeffrey. Come to your house. No, it, they're in my head. <laughs> Jennifer O'Neill, like with a psychic yeah. ability. Yeah. They, uh, there's a movie called Ninja Terminator, and oh, it was shit. made by this yeah. guy called Jeffrey Ho, and ba or Gregory Ho, whatever the hell. Gregory Ho. Joffrey Ho, whatever. Anyway, his main thing was to take two movies and put them together, and there's like, so, and then ninjas with uh, headbands that say ninja in colorful outfits, but. Uh, so I got it. Now it was like 40 bucks because wow. I had to get the special edition because they have the movie that, that they used for Ninja Terminator in there. It's the, un, you know, the, the original film before they added all the other stuff. So I just keep, uh, I'm still waiting on the, uh, case of the bloody Iris. Uh, yeah, it's that's a, June, that is. I think six of June, maybe. Oh shit! Oh I thought God. it was. I thought it was April. You heard that the Beyond 4K is coming. Oh yeah, I mean, I knew. I thought that when I first started seeing that first that uh, Fritzy did another store for it. Yeah. And then they were going around showing a 4K uh, remaster at theaters, and I was like, it's definitely going to come. I hope at that some that point comes comes here so I can go see it. I mean. Yeah. Thinking uh, about, I might be wrong with case of Buddy Iris actually because I'm thinking about um, absurd and anthropophagus. Or yeah, anything. I'm not. So those things are yeah. forty bucks a piece or something. Uh, there's a rumor UK. I'm gonna get them. There's a rumor that House with the Laughing Windows is coming. To yeah, play. yeah. So I don't know uh, if you're a fan uh, of that one, but uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the ending of it to me is kind of like. Is that a Poopy Avati or whatever. Yeah, it's an amazing Avati. film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But but Steve, I gotta ask you since you said I say they, yes, they, Dana, I will marry they, you again. Okay. <laughs> Renew they, your vows. Yeah, we need to do that. The I'm but, going to get Elvis to do it though. But can I use yeah. that the next time you're going to get mad at me for buying something that the the movie the distribution company made me buy? <laughs> They yeah. made me buy yeah. all these. I mean, it, it, I was just saying, do it. it's not <laughs> them. They're just tempting me. Okay. And I can't, res my resistance, I had to use paying for to make myself do it. Because I, I can. Yeah, it gets on me for using Well, to, er, you had, we, you had a lot more paying for us, but anyway. I see uh, the mayor's talking about he's waiting for the 8K. Have you, have you seen one of those 8K TVs in a, like, Best Buy or something? It's like. Yeah. It's like what seven thousand dollars or some shit. Oh my! <laughs> no, I mean yeah, the chances of me and her going to a Best Buy again probably are almost zero since they got well, rid they of it. Don't have any money right, anymore. so there's really no and and obviously it's they're a damn washing machine or a TV. Yeah, yeah, or a fridge. I or mean, be bugged by the people trying to get here. Consumption. You want to go here? Yeah. All right, we'll get a thousand dollar fridge. I mean. uh I did get my yeah, one you can, uh, TV from them, though. One you can control the temperature when you're at work, you know? Yeah. Oh, this is or getting you, too cold. Or you can see what's <laughs> in the refrigerator without yeah. opening the door. Yeah. I so this is completely, <laughs> completely off topic, right? But I'm like, because I'm going to be getting a new TV soon. So how much do you guys spend on a TV and what make would you suggest, like? It depends on the budget, on budget like what I'm working with. You know what I mean? I'd like, say up to up to like a thousand pound, maybe. I think right now, every here's the thing about televisions. I mean, you obviously you probably guys know that every six months things right. get better, and and then yeah. the old stuff gets cheaper. Yeah. So it's just uh, you, you, whatever you get. I mean, definitely. 
I mean, it also depends on the size. I saw an OLED television. It was a. It was in. I can't remember if it was forty two or. Was that or fifty? The ones we saw in Costco. No, um, it was like seven or eight hundred bucks. But that to me, after you get the larger you go, and uh, uh, if you uh, take the sexual stuff out, once yeah. you go big, you don't want to go small. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I <laughs> ain't no long. turning back. Fifty. Yeah. I got a fifty-five in the bedroom, and Dana bought us a seventy-two for the t- uh, living room. Right. Now, obviously, the the crazy part is obviously I still watch a, a lot of shit that I've downloaded that maybe even VHS source, so it looks like hot garbage in a seventy-two yeah. inch screen. Yes. But you know, a majority of stuff we watch is either standard def or. H H D so uh Right. I mean it, have you got I, Samsung? Is it Samsung you want? Yeah, we have both Samsung. Now the one thing about Samsung it's really cool is they have their own streaming service right. for it's free, okay. of course, and you get the free channels. Um I would so, say High Sense is a good budget uh Yeah, TV. I might get one of them for the bedroom now, you know, I mean I got like, a high sense yeah. it's they can do shit that a Samsung can do and and it's uh, it was like it was like seven hundred, I think. But, and uh, I, I would I, personally, I don't know about a Roku TV or anything like that because I don't really like that platform. Like, no, I don't either. I got my, my Dana's got, a, and I bought another Roku because there's a few channels on Roku that are pretty cool, but uh, I hardly ever watch them. So I kind of spent thirty or forty dollars not really watching a lot of them. But yeah. uh, even the Fire TV TVs I heard were not that great. I usually uh, don't even use the platform that's on, built in the TV. Right, I don't I, either. Yeah, I usually. Well, Friday night we had, we went through a couple, a tornado a week or so ago. That we went, didn't go well, it went in the area. And then yet Friday night we lost power for about two hours. For no apparent reason. I mean, I, it had to be tree limb or something. So, quick as the power went out, I ran out, got the generator hooked up, got and, a bunch of gas. and got and tried to fi- fix the TV so we could watch something. Yeah. And then right and when then, you got it worked out, the yeah, it came back came back, back on. on. Oh my. <laughs> so, but anyway, so oh, I get yeah, But you're right. If you hadn't done that, we would have been without power all night. Well, I um, it. But Darren, do, do y'all get like, do y'all have Black Friday deals and all that? Yeah, man. Yeah, we got okay. all that. Never used to, but recently we've been getting them all the time. They want more of that money, that's why. Anything <laughs> America does, we do later. Like, yeah. uh, we, do, we do follow you all the time, yeah. There's a dark history with uh, Black Friday. I, I won't mention it here. but Like the Thanksgiving movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> the tragedy up in Boston or Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts. Massachusetts. <laughs> Well, I got I gotta go mow the yard, so I guess we'll take off. Uh, we got twenty four in here. Thanks for Damn. that's okay. a lot for yeah, uh, that's a quite... Sunday morning. Yeah, uh, y'all ain't going to church, so you're here. Uh, but anyway, everybody's going to hell yeah. then. If they this is the this is uh <laughs> this church. is church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Church for hard. Oh, I wanted to show one thing that I just recently got. Mm. I think it's pretty cool, and you can get the shit pretty cheap mm. from Severin. Huh? Is that oh, Michelle yeah. Suave? Oh yeah. yeah! Wow. Cool. So that yeah. was like, I think it was like sixteen bucks for his autograph, and then I had to get Gastaldi's autograph. Oh, nice! For nice. Uh, for ten bucks. Do. Ten bucks, man. So, yeah, yeah. That yeah, we're pulling up there as well in age. So yeah. We're yeah. Oh yeah. Maxine. Yeah, Maxine looks. You know. Oh hell yeah. It's probably Lots my most of, anticipated. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty up there, so. I love the old Richard Ramirez in that trailer, like, because we've got the Night Stalker, and then you've got mm. Killer with Black Gloves, so it looks like it could be a Jalo. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm stoked. I think that's going to be the best of the year, easily. I did yeah. go see uh, First Omen. Oh. I, I really liked it a lot, man. Oh. Really it takes place in Italy, so. But, yeah, are yeah. we gonna go see that, huh? Maybe. Okay. 
I want to go see it because the horror movies are few and far between anymore. I mean, like they were, uh, uh, I forgot who said something about late night yeah, with I the devil. Right. That but that's going to be on shutter here before right. too long. That's so. why I was like, nah, I'll just wait on that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, I can <clears throat> wait and see it for for what I pay for shutter. Right. So uh, I guess I will let everybody go. And uh, we'll be back in uh, two weeks with uh, the New York Ripper. The New York yeah. Vagina Mutilator. Uh, the <laughs> anti-woman movie of the year for 1980. Silver toes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like. What, three fingers or whatever his name is. Yeah. You like? You liked my toe up in uh, your area? Huh? <laughs> Let's go watch a live sex show, Dana. Let's not. Go to Tijuana. Let's oh, not. No. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Uh, shit. So we'll uh, let everybody go, and we'll talk to you guys later. We'll be back in two weeks with the New York Ripper. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Have a good one, guys. Have a good one.